502, I call this work session to order. First up is Art Wall. I don't see our... Yes, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. You snuck in on you. You are up. All right. Uh, I have some papers to pass out. Okay. Anybody who would want one. Just get a minute here. Um, this is a pamphlet that my website designer made regarding the creation of uh, the Artwell website that I put in. Okay. Does anybody else want one? Yeah. And then one more thing. you guys again. Uh, it's been a minute, but I've been working on this for a while now. I've only gotten more excited, so I hope you guys are excited too. Um, so just kind of as a recap, uh, my name is Avery Jura. Um, I was here a while ago and I were, well, I'm proposing the idea of an art wall in downtown Whitehall for free expression of art, basically. And so I've basically narrowed down my proposal into a list of actions that I'm going to do. Um, assuming that it's approved, so that it's pretty straightforward what would be happening if this is approved. So, I just kind of want to walk you down to the, the second paper that I gave out. Um, you'll notice on the back of the paper is uh, just kind of a collage that I created of uh, some art examples that was requested at the last meeting. This is just a bunch of my own works that I put together, so that's just kind of some of the stuff that I've made. Um, but obviously there'd be a lot of diverse different styles going up on the wall. But that's just some of my stuff. So, um, the first thing that would be attached to this R wall that I would do is I would like to obviously clean up the area because the tunnel, I mean, it's nice, but it needs some improvement. So uh, I've got a couple of bullets here. Removing waste, weeds, leaves, and vegetation. There's a lot of like just dirt on the walls and stuff. Um, and I'd like to create and maintain signs. Uh, I talk about one specific, like a rule sign later down, but just like nice signs that basically, I, I'm going to put like a trash can out and like things that say to, you know, keep your, keep the space clean. Um, and then making like general improvements to the area. And I obviously will be painting on the wall <laughs> if it's approved because I'm big into that. Uh, the next thing, uh, that I would like to do is actually I've already done. So I've actually added two more people to my crew. So a website designer, her name, her name is Amelia Chen. She'll be a senior next year at Whitehall. Um, and she has experience creating websites for NHD. And she has created this pamphlet, which has a bunch of information about the website that I'd like to make. Uh, and then also Brady Tate is gonna be a junior next year at Whitehall. And he's gonna be a new member of NHS. And I have appointed him to be uh, the caretaker, um, and the, the jobs of the caretaker would be, so regularly, minimum monthly, um, check up uh, the wall, make sure there's nothing, you know, overly inappropriate or, you know, not kind of offensive, uh, plan the annual cleaning, because I'd like to get that done every year, um, I'll keep the website and social media, although media, Amelia would be helping with that because she's the website designer. Um, Planning events, outreach, um, if there's a social media account, uh, upkeeping that, and then also maintaining a relationship with you guys, you know, keeping you guys in the loop about everything that's going on. Um, the next thing would be the website. So I, I've given the pamphlet because honestly, I don't know very much about website design, which is why I had Amelia join me. So she created this pamphlet so that you guys can see like what would be included in that and 
there's going to be a, a price attached yearly. So I'm hoping that we could do like a fundraiser or something just with our NHS. It would probably be like between $50 to $100 a year for the domain. Um, but that's like light work. I mean, we could just sell some paint for one day a year and call it a painting day and make quite a bit of money for the wall. So um, obviously nonprofit. And then, uh, so then the, the more jobs, uh, no, like, sorry. So then the, here's, here's just some bullets about the website and like the purposes. Um, contact information of whoever's the caretaker at the time. So right now it'll be Brady Tate. However, I'm, he's gonna graduate in a few years. So I'd like to keep that going for you know quite a while um, so that we can make sure that this wall is being uh, like kept up to date. Um, I would like to create like a portal for like a like a a public report so that public can report like misconduct or inappropriate stuff on the wall. So basically, if if you see something, then you can go to the website, which there'll be a barcode like at the wall so that you can like easily do that. Um, and then also like a place where the artists can send pictures because a lot of these art walls um, they they get covered up frequently because they're being frequently used. And it's kind of, a, I, think, I feel like if the website is, a, is kind of a place where we can share the artwork and then we can kind of immortalize it because if it's, if it's constantly getting covered up, then not everyone can enjoy it. And then also, uh, I'd like to create a social media. So just something to spread events, uh, updates, artist profiles potentially, pictures, like I said, to immortalize the art and updates, such and such. Um, add to legalwalls.net. So this is just a website that I've used in the past as a street artist. It's literally just a nonprofit organization where you can go on and say that this wall is a safe place to paint, and it would be very. It, it's like three steps for me to just add this wall. So that would be something that I would do. Um, I'd create a rule sign. So what I'm thinking is just like a wooden box, probably like two foot by two foot by like six inches, and then with a glass plate over the top. And then inside would just be like a bulletin board with like the general rules. Here's the rules that I've kind of decided on with my team. No hate speech or inappropriate language slash content. Be considerate of other artists' works and keep the area clean. Um, and the wood blocks, the wood box would be locked with a removable glass panel so that no one can like paint over it, obviously, because that would be bad so people couldn't see the rules. But yeah, that's, that's all I've got right now, so. Any questions or comments at this at this time? I have one question right off the top of my head. Are we looking at the entire tunnel and the wall after it, or are we just looking at the wall outside? I, I, I'm not positive what all okay. we're looking at to include in this. Yeah, so I get what you're saying. So for those of you who are not familiar with the area, the, the tunnel is alongside the bike trail, and then it also kind of like goes off to the side toward Goodrich. Um, right now, that, that kind of part that goes off to the side, I'm assuming that's what you're talking about. No, I'm talking about the wall going, going uh, along the, the other trail. way, too. Yeah, I... No, so I, mean, I know that part of the wall is included in it. I wasn't sure if the tunnel was included in it. Yes, also. yes. I'm just assuming that basically all of the cement surfaces in that area would be eventually... I'm not sure how much that one wall is going to be there or how much longer it's going to be there. Well, no, you're talking about you're talking about the wall where. Oh, yeah. Not um, not on West Colby. Not on not on West Colby that property. <coughs> oh. So essentially, it would be I'm thinking it would be from the tunnel to Tom or not Thompson. Hanson, like Hanson, Yeah. 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 It'd be from the tunnel on this side to Hanson. Yeah. Because the other part of it that's is, gone. Yeah. That's. I mean, that soon would be with, yeah, with be whatever concerned. work we're going to be doing yeah. there, I don't yeah, know yeah, what kind of wall there's even going to be there anymore. Yep. Um, probably not, be not, quite a bit of wall, but the not so, not so sure that the person spending their money building a building would want artwork facing their windows. So I think we might have to leave that part of it out of there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, anything that's not public, I'll include signs around the area to make sure that people aren't painting on anything that's obviously not not part of the wall. So I'll make boundaries and make sure that people, it's very clear what is okay to be painted on and what is not. And the only other thing I have that it's more of a, probably a personal comment or personal feeling or whatever, as you've talked before about 
uh, you know, people painting over other people's stuff. And my first thought would be if there's space to, still open space to paint, nobody paints over anybody else's yeah, stuff. I would 100% agree with you. And that's why in the rules list, I've just included be considerate of other artists' works. So, I mean, I guess what that would mean to me, I mean, that could be taken different ways, but I guess the, the most basic way that I see that is just if there's an open spot in the wall, then paint there. Don't paint over top of somebody else. So have you seen anybody in your travels where they have taken from yours and added to it? I actually have, yeah. So I did a piece in, uh, I did a piece in Ann Arbor a, a while back, and somebody went and created like a background to it, and it was kind of cool, like a, like a landscape, and it was pretty so sweet. Okay, cool. Almost like a puzzle. And I, would, I could totally see something like that happening in the future, too. Like, there's a spot in uh, Grand Rapids, um, near a climbing gym that I go to, actually, and uh, every time I go, there's just something different, and it's just kind of like weird geometric shapes, and it's just pretty cool. Any other questions? Well, from my perspective looking at this, I think he's done a, a bang-up job as far as going through and putting together the process and uh, the stuff to give it to us. Um, I, you, you don't have a website yet, do you? No. So I just want to get it like approved, make sure you guys know, like are okay with the idea, and then I would go and build the stuff that is required. So yeah, I just want to make sure that you guys are good with the idea first. You put a put a lot of thought into the, the caretaking of this yeah this project and lots of troubleshooting what, yeah what I'm wondering about is you know in the the long term going forward is you know people they, they graduate and, and they move away whether it's through NHS or or somewhere else is is there any sort of um, like adult um, oversight or chaperone type role that would that would be continuous Advice. year yeah. after year after year. Um, yeah, so that would be the ultimate point of responsibility. Yeah, so two things to add to that. First of all, um, my name will always be on the website, and I'll be because like Whitehall will always be my home, and I'll be a resource as as long as this as long as I'm alive for this wall, and I'd like to be on that website for forever. Um, first thing, and second thing, um, this is now a uh, WHS legacy pro NHS legacy project, which means that it gets passed down every year, um, and so. Uh, our, our NHS advisors, uh, right now Mr. Thompson and Mr. Kogel, um, are there and I've talked to them extensively about this project and they're there to help make sure that this um, continues to be maintained over the years. And also the people that I appoint will make sure that they have a successor when they graduate and leave. Mm -hmm. Will the standards change from one, from one uh, person to the next? Um, well. <laughs> Uh, under my oversight, definitely not. But um, if anyone had any changes in policy that they wish to have, I'm guessing that the person that they would contact would be you guys. So. So when when are you going to have a list of the policies? This is right here. Right here. This is the, the rules. This is what I got. This is really the list. The last three bullets. The other side is that colored. There you go. Oh yeah. So what? Uh, what is? Uh, inappropriate as far as you're concerned. I mean, inappropriate yeah, language, stuff that would... Might not think that that was inappropriate, or maybe... Um, no, I, would, I wouldn't accept political statements, things that were um, used inappropriate uh, language, like swear words, things that aren't like school appropriate, like children appropriate, anything like that, um, like no nudity or sex sexual content, things like that would be painted over. What about religious type content? Um, I think that things could be said for either side of that. I wouldn't paint over something as long as it wasn't offending a specific group. So, I mean, if somebody made like a, a giant cross that was like beautiful and intricate, I wouldn't paint over it because it's not offensive to anybody. Or at least, I mean, outside sources. And then look, Steve, from on what I've seen on here is he's going to have a reportable. Yeah, um, that's another thing. What so those, what do they call those little black dotty things that you? QR. QR. Yeah. Code. yeah. So on the website, so you, can scan, you can scan your QR code and say, "Hey, this is a, I don't like yeah. this," and it can come back. It'll be a direct thing on the in in the rules uh, in the rule sign. There'll be a QR code, 
and I'll have it very clearly so that someone can um, report any misconduct or inappropriate content. So if someone disagrees with something, then we'll paint it over, regardless of what it is. I don't know if I like the idea of somebody just going there and painting whatever they think is wonderful. I think that the uh, design ought to be approved before they do it. So now I don't know if that limits. <clears throat> yeah, I, I or what? But I, I don't because between the time of it going up and it offending a bunch of people and it actually being something being done about it, that that might be quite a while. I don't know. Might be a month. Might be three months. I don't know. Well, but, Steve, this is going to be public space, which says if you paint something tomorrow and you go down there tomorrow and you find it offensive, you can paint over it. Anyone can put what they want there. When we open this up to public, we're saying the public can do this. It's not just Avery that's going to do it. It's We're saying any, anybody that feels artistic desire to put something up there can do it. And anyone that finds anything offensive, can you can go down there with your can of spray paint and cover it up. Right over the top of it. Art is subjective. I mean, yes, it is. <clears throat> that art is is completely different than what I might think art is. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Some people think that uh, taking a can, can of paint and throwing it on a wall and a different color here and another color here, but that's art. <laughs> yep. Well, not just art, but I think the words appropriate and offensive are also inherently subjective and, and due to the nature exactly. of art. You, I think it's very likely you will get people want to test the boundaries and and it's possible in the future that that testing of boundaries results with discussions coming right back yeah. to this board. Um, that's we have the nature, I suppose. Changes. Yeah, you, and, and if we don't like it. We do a test run, and we don't like it. It gets painted back over. I mean, it's not like it's the end of the world. That's is it painted now? <laughs> huh? Is it painted? Yes, now? the inside of the tunnel is painted now. It's painted gray. And the gray. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, out, gray. The, the outside piece to the north is not. But I was just down there the other day looking, just because I knew this was coming up. But yeah. I thought it was beige. There is <laughs> some sort of <laughs> that was on there now yeah. that's been there for quite some time. Might I point out, it's not the most beautiful piece I've ever seen. <laughs> is, it, is it art or is it? It's just somebody painting? took a spray paint can and somebody's tag. Yeah. But we've, that's it, what I'm concerned about. I, I mean, that type of thing. what I've what I've experienced also. in my experience of art walls is that you'll get you'll get really big intricate pieces, and then you'll get little things like that. But when you put it all together, it looks really good, regardless of how little talent the people who just spray their names is. The color and everything, it just kind of makes a culture and it looks cool. It's almost like a changing mural. Exactly. Yeah. I'm, so. Personally, I, I'm excited to see what happens there. I'm, I think this is a wonderful thing. I, I, I share your apprehension to a point, Steve, that I certainly don't want anything inappropriate up there. And I'm, I'm going to be watching it on a daily basis. But what you could say might be painted, yeah. might not be the same as what I consider. It. That's so true. Yeah, yeah, so let's, let's, let's you and I collaborate on that. You can start it. You, <laughs> you're close <laughs> enough. You can check it every day as well. You can make a collaborative art piece yeah, you expressing your feelings if you like. I mean, I've never seen a Picasso painting that I thought was art. So mm -hmm. look what they sell for. Yeah. I mean, and how many places they have, have, you, like have you traveled? Me. Uh, gosh. Sound like, sound like you do this I've been over. to at least six or seven different art walls and I've seen so many different pieces all over internet through my travels and I'm, I'm just in love with street so art. So you've been to six to seven different locations yourself yeah. putting this stuff up? Yeah. Okay. And in, in your experience how many offensive pieces have you seen that um, would say offend you? I haven't personally been offended. The worst thing that I've seen was just uh, during times of political tension, statements such as like, help Ukraine, stuff like that. Um, that's the only things that I've seen that would, you know, make me hesitate at all just because it's overly political. But I haven't seen anything like overly offensive. What if somebody puts a rainbow flag up there and some people don't like that idea? Then we'll paint it over. If they report it, then we'll paint it over. 
gives you another spot. I, I think it's a cool idea. Because as, as the police officers in this council chamber can attest, there has been tagging done around the city. And this gives them, again, just kind of like the skateboarders and everything else, it gives them a place to go. Hey, guess what? Instead of doing this over on KK's car wash over there, go down there. It gives them a place to put somebody. Hey, guys, we got a spot. Just go down there. That is a valuable point. And I actually, in my research paper that I did last time, um, I actually did research on uh, the Ann Arbor art wall, and I've noticed that the the crime I literally looked at the crime mapping over time and like the the vandalism through like like vandalism in general has gone down in other areas after the art wall was implemented. Gives the kids of that age group something to do. Maybe to get a job. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I would I would certainly like you to uh, I, you know I think there's enough positivity enough consensus here that Thing. I, I'm, I'm, I'm all for going forward with it, and when it comes right down to it, if, if it turns out in a year, two years, that hey, this isn't working out, how big of a deal is it to repay? I mean, we know, can stop it at any point. Stop it yeah. and pay no and, and, and just leave it. Absolutely. But at the, any council meeting, we can yeah. say, okay, that's it, we're done. Yeah. But, but I don't know, I, I have seen it in other areas. Uh, some of the stuff that they've done in Muskegon over the, the, the highway. That they stuff. paid for. And I, paid yeah, for. Yeah, and I realize, yeah, I realize <laughs> that's a little bit different. That was, that, a fortune, that was a complete theme was you know, that right. was done. But, but it's, it's very attractive, I mean, I. And it's a great location, it's unique. Where else can these guys say, hey, we yeah. painted under a bridge tunnel? I mean, or right. on that one. So, so, yeah, I'd like to see where it goes. <clears throat> just to add real quick, I'd just like to point out that I decided to name the wall Inspiration Art Wall just because I think that's a fitting title and I feel inspired to do art myself and I feel that other people can be inspired by this area to do it as well. I would certainly, uh, so at, at this point, it would have to go to a, do we need to move it to a council meeting for an official vote? Yeah, Will and I were just talking about that. We probably do need to have some sort of formalization or I formal think, approval. I think so. Looking at um, incorporating a lot what uh, Avery has already put together <coughs> with the obvious stipulation that at any time a majority council says we're done, then we're done. And the artist will just have to know that that's you know, the bottom line. I know the conversations uh, council members Sikinga have come up with the the art walk with the sculptures that have been put around the White Lake community you know, who's going to approve and at that point I think the City Council I don't know if you were on it that time Jeff and Steve was yeah. should the City Council be a, be approving it same discussion four might like it three might dislike it we just kind of trusted the artist and the process not to have anything offensive now one might seem more like a trail so uh, also I would certainly suggest that uh, before you make any plans to do any signage or trash cans or whatever you certainly connect with staff and dpw i mean it, it, oh, we're, we're fine with him cleaning as soon as he wants to. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm thinking you mentioned a trash can i mean that, that, that gets a lot of bike traffic and foot traffic and yeah you certainly don't want a, a, someone crashing into a, a trash can or so anything that well, we'll try to adhere to all regulations as so well. Just, needed. just so D, D, the DPW and staff knows what's going on up there. More down going there. Yes. So I, I do have a question. Like I said, I think this is an awesome idea. I think it's going to run real well. Is can we help them out with the signage so it looks professional and? Um, we can to a degree. I, I don't know if we need anything as elaborate as a wooden as a locked wooden box. I think something that's uh, weather resistant. Um, I'm just thinking nothing a, metal, a metal sign on each end, like what we got at the sliding hill and everything yeah, else. It just pretty says, much something we get yeah, from Zorn Boss and Tallinn. Like, like, yeah, like uh, at the at the uh, splash, splash pad. pad. Here's yeah. your rules. Yeah. 
it's easy enough to have them put a QR code in the corner for you, yeah. and uh, we can probably that way that. we cover that, and that's something you can you can pay for your web page, and we can. I would like to see if there's anything we can do to improve the lighting in there because it's not real good. Yeah, I would also like to do that in the future as well. Um, I don't know what that entails as far as is it a different type of wall or is that whatever? Is, is, that, Scott, the state, is, that, is, that, is that the state's tone or actually, know. or is it our, not when it comes to spending money? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a sodium in there now? I think so. so. All right, so we run a couple of LED strips yeah. in there. We probably be yeah, and we can fund that with our fundraising as well. So that'll be future stuff. I just want to get it going for now. I agree. I agree. I just have a couple of comments. Yes. First of all, I think it's a great idea. Um, I don't think that it's I think him having a mechanism of deciding what is approval approved or not approved is better than us being as a public entity saying what is right and wrong. I think you guys need to have that <coughs> yourself, whatever mechanism that you put in place and keep us out of it, so to speak, and let let the wall work. Okay. That's just my, you know, I don't, I, I don't want to come, well, it, it's, it's not, in my opinion, as being public officials, it's, it's not my Determination: What is offensive and what is not offensive? That's up to the public and the artists. That's a valid point. Right. And that, that would be my one piece of recommendation uh, going going forward: is when it comes to what is and isn't allowed up on the wall, kind of read the pulse of the community because the one thing that would ultimately shut this down more than anything else is complaints coming into, I mean, not just us, but our successors in these positions. If, if, if they start getting a lot of complaints, that that might spell the end of the project. So kind of anticipate what those things might be and try not to cause that. Yeah. yeah. Right. And I do like the NHL, the NHS legacy thing. Cause that's, I do. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's going to move. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's going to move, so. Yeah. Perfect. I think that, uh, we know what direction Staff we're knows heading. what direction to go. <laughs> All right. Yep. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you, guys. Um, probably nothing official till the next council meeting. Next council meeting. All righty. Well, I look forward to it. Thank you guys again. Thank, Thank you. you for all your work you put in. Yeah, absolutely. Next up is deer culling. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do the intro, I guess. Sure. And it's all yours. <laughs> Um, I did include Montague's uh, Code of Ordinances, and on your desk, I'll call it that, Brenda's got a fancier name for it, um, is basically areas within the city uh, where if we adopted the minimum six acres, allowing two adjacent acres to combine for the six, are the areas that uh, deer calling would be eligible, I'm not saying approved, just eligible, the yellow is private areas and the blue are public areas. Again, those are eligible. That doesn't mean every area that's colored is gonna be allowed. Um, obviously, the city council would have a lot of say in the schools over you know, their properties, as well as you know, the biggest chunk down at the south end is obviously how met. But it, by the strict definition of minimum six acres, allowing you know, two parcels to combine, this is what you get. This, these are areas where you could have deer hunting in the city. It's pretty substantial, man. It was kind of. It was a lot yeah, of when, just, I, when I, I was waiting for it, and I looked at it, and I'm like, oh, geez. Somebody worked. They yes. worked hard on that one. <laughs> I, I ran out of blue highlighter. Yeah. <laughs> my my only thing that I want to throw out before Go ahead. he he runs with it is uh, maybe looking at smaller than a six acre spot to make it, you know, available to more area so we can actually call more deer. I, I think and, probably and, the, and the largest... Unless there's a requirement that, that that is the smallest we can go. I, you, can, you can go down to an acre. Um, you're going to have pretty much the entire map colored. Yeah, I, I think, and I'll, I'll leave it up to the deer hunters uh, mm -hmm. and the crew, and I'm smaller or larger, um, but I think the smaller you make it, the greater the safety risk. Yeah. 
looking at this, I, right now in the amount that's available, um, if we just, it, it, I wouldn't mind seeing it go to four, but I'm looking at this six right now gets us a pretty good chunk of property. I guess we could always review it, to, you know, bring it up for review next year and see how it goes. Um, this is a very, I, this is a very well written ordinance from, I went through it at least two or three times just to make sure I got everything. Um, there's only a couple little changes that I probably would do and it just for sake of saving the police department some stuff and us some stuff. Um, I don't see why we would have to um, issue a permit for every two weeks. I think we could do it for the bow season, which would which gives you established parameters already. Um, the hunt, as a hunter, I know I can hunt from November 15th to November 30th my rifle. I know this. Um, so I don't really, to change it, to make it another set of rules is, I think, again, we apply KISS principle of this. It makes it easier for the guys and gals out there hunting. Um, and we won't have to worry about it every two weeks. Um, that's under number B1. Under B5, um, <clears throat> Michigan has changed their rules uh, two years ago, three years ago, that you can buy, they, they, they provide X amount of, of, of of uh, additional dough permits you can buy right over the counter. Um, I don't see a reason why if there are X amount of dough permits available and a guy decides to get three or four um, that that's an issue um, versus um, saying hey you can only get one and then the second one's got to be a buck. Again I think following the rules of following the, the DNR already established rules that um, I do like the idea of the first one has to be a doe, which is not DNR rules, but the second one can be a buck. Um, that is not a big deal or an additional doe. Um, other than that, I didn't see anything in here really that screamed and yelled that needs to be changed. The other thing was uh, there. there's a specifically written, the Montague one is specifically <coughs> written that you can combine, two people oh, can yes, combine. Yes, yes, that was the other one. Yep, yep you're right. Um, if we change that to multiple, multiple, you know. Three people living next door to each other yeah. and they come up with the right amount. I don't know how much that would increase or decrease. Yeah, I mean, if, if you had. And again, that would. An uh, entire block. Yeah, yeah. and that would. That, that all were yeah. tired of the deer eating their flowers. Yep. Yeah. Um, and they all agreed if that fell in. The, Within the 150 the, feet. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I mean, you're still looking at the houses and yep. everything you have else, to limit, but, yeah. and the roads, yep. so far from the road, so far from the house, yep. but, I mean, if you had somebody in town that had an acre and a half, and or two people that had an acre and a half, and somebody else that had three or four acres, and they all joined each other, I don't know why three people couldn't all combine their property together if they all agreed. The 150 feet seems like a very reasonable safety precaution for the, the line of sight for flight of an, of an arrow. arrow. Yes. And uh, I'm, I'm wondering, you know, if you got a ravine like Bush Creek where you, you're shooting very much down into mm -hmm. the ravine, if maybe that needs the same 150 foot limit. If you look at those houses, if level. you look at those houses down there, though, they're, you're you're pretty close to 150 feet away from the house, even because my uncle used to live on to Alice, and the, mm -hmm. going back to his back his property and going to the neighbor's property across the way, that, there's a pretty good. If you go down the gully, the end of not Elizabeth, where's the gully cross over here? One crosses down the off of Livingston, and then there's another one that cross off of. Or, yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a substantial amount of property from the house on this side to the house on this side. Yeah. So, and, and the Montague one does say you have to be, you have to hunt from an elevated. Yes, I would I would keep know, that as well. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You, you're not going to be ground hunting. You're not going to be ground line you're, hunting. You're, you're always going to be a rifle shooting or down to yep. minimize. I mean, yep. it's you, you're always going to have a possibility of a ricochet no matter what, but. You're always hunting down, so yeah. that that takes a lot of the air out of it. Yep, but with a bow and a crossbow, they don't go. So the section, away. the section fourteen two hundred one in here with regards to feeding, do we have anything that closely mirrors that currently in in our city ordinance? We do not. We depend on the state uh, regulation 
which it, is actually a DNR commissioner rule. So that's somewhat redundant with what the state already prohibits. Yes. And you, you've got the ability to enforce it's, that. But it gives us, a, I'll say, a different vehicle by which to enforce <coughs> it. That right there, if we could get 100% compliance, would be a step <coughs> in the right direction. <laughs> it sounds sounds to me like they uh, obtain a permit from the city and there's a fee. Do you know what they charge for their... I do not. I, I would imagine it's... I don't think it's in here. I didn't see it in here. I don't think it has to be expensive. I mean, they're already buying their deer license and they're, they're providing, essentially in a, in a roundabout way, they're providing the city a service because they're taking care of the deer herd that's already out of, out of hand. Are we incurring a cost that we need to be reimbursed for? The only thing I could think processing. is processing and them guys going out there and looking and making sure it's appropriate. Yeah. I mean, I would keep it to a minimum. Um, I think our perspective. business registration is 35. Mm -hmm. So probably about, break even amount. about the same amount of paperwork yeah. involved. Yeah, I think that would be valid. If, I know, like I said, I've already had multiple people, especially the guys at work that, are, that have family that live in the city of Whitehall. Like, oh, geez, you know, they, they all know. So we're, we're looking. And I think this would definitely hopefully fix the, some of the issues we got going on with deer destruction in the, in the, in the city. There was a lot of the, uh, a good portion of the public considered public property as school property. Uh, do, <coughs> as long as you're not near a, a actual school building, they would have to do give you them. still need permission from the school to hunt on that property? Or? Yeah, you have to register the property in which you intend to hunt on. So the schools would have to come in and say, we're going to allow people to hunt. Okay. And I'm sure there could be some sort of provision with, like, not while well, school's in session, if that's the rule that the school board wants to put we on got, or something like that. we got a member of the school board in the back. Just turned around. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's not acting today. No, no, he's not. <laughs> If I had to venture a guess, they're probably going to pass. They're probably, yeah, from a liability standpoint, I'm sure. Liability standpoint, I'm sure they're probably going to pass. Now, the County Resource Recovery Center does allow it, but that's a few thousand acres, and there's a lot of room out there. You know, two buildings, I think, on that whole site. And we could limit, I mean, if we, if we got somebody that wants to hunt, like out at the DPW garage on the backside out there, I mean, we could limit, you know, the first couple that come in or the first guy that comes in and wants it and if they're going to continue to harvest okay you got first shot and then you know we establish a list I mean if we want to go that route but um, I'm sure we might have people on the actually work for the DPW that might want to do that but I don't know but for see sure. if you get if you allow a certain number of people on there and then you give them the whole season well then that kind of cuts everybody else out it, it and does I, and, I don't and know it, you could you could give them you could give a, a, make it a lottery. I mean, just like what the county does out in Kim, doesn't the county do that out the wastewater still? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they allow people to hunt out at the wastewater. They have a lottery. You want to do it? You have to have your 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 request in by this amount of date. They put it in there and pull the lottery tickets and you know. The Soil Conservation it. District does it by first come first yep. serve. Yep. And uh, they you know limit it to a number of people. Yep. Yep. Like there's a 20 acre piece just the other side of Wiley Drive. I know, I've been trying to get on it for years. <laughs> yeah. I don't care. You gotta take the deer as long as someone gotta takes it. The day I know, I know. it out for years and you don't have a chance. But, yeah. But I think, I think again, I think this is something that's that's easy to put in place and, and really easy to limit and change it and massage and make it just like the art wall, like we want. Um, if we don't like the, the first draft and it's not working, we can make it work. I mean, but... The deer population, I saw a mama and a baby floating out the other day out on Alice Street. So, I mean, they've already dropped, and yeah. so yeah, it's, it's only going to double, right it's only going to double railroad. roughly every yeah. year, so. so the mama with twins right down by the railroad trestle. Yep, yesterday. yep, so. Well, I think the time's come for this. Absolutely. I, mean, I, would, I, would, I would be very happy if the school board would, would get on board. I'd be very happy if how much yeah, with their nice big parcel down here would, uh, 
would be open to the idea, but whoever does or doesn't participate mm -hmm. as far as property owners, I think it's worth going for. And who knows how many, you know, they used to have the, the shooting range out there and it was for their employees. And then who mm -hmm. knows how many may say that to their employees. Hey, this is a perk of working here. Hey, we'll give, we'll give, let you guys go out here and do this. Police department approves it, the city approves it, and away you go. So. Mm -hmm. Could staff possibly like give us a list of city owned property that they feel would be okay? I could probably give you that answer right now. None. None. Um, just because I, I think there's a lot of concern with, um, I mean, our property is open to the public. And if you start mixing bow hunters uh, with the family that's going out there for a walk, um, I, I think you're probably running into a lot of issues. Um, even out at DPW, if somebody's out there hunting and the crews come in at 2 in the morning, I don't know what probably can't hunt at night, right? No. No. Day, daybreak to dot, daybreak yeah. to sunset. Yes. Um, and, and I don't know if Will wants to chime in one way or another, but I, I would have a lot of concerns because we're allowing the general public to be on most city property at any time they want uh, for lawful purposes. Um, then you mix in hunters, which could be right for some issues. I did speak with the uh, mayor of Montague a little over an hour ago and asked him how he, he felt this was working and he was convinced that it was working well. Um, his only advice was to, uh, he thought it would be best if we kept it to ourselves, that we didn't make a big broadcast of it because the more you broadcast it out there, the more outside people are going to come and we can, 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 we, can we limit it? We can limit it. Yeah. We can limit it. Where is that? We, we were just discussing yeah. that. And unless we're missing it, we, we see where the property has to be registered and then certain requirements and restrictions on the hunters. And unless I'm missing it. To me, it seems like, you know, let's say I have six acres and I get my property registered. I, I still want to control who actually goes out there and hunts. Instead of just anybody. And so you can say, Montague so I don't know. That. Pardon? Montague does have that where the property owner has to approve okay. who the hunter is. Is that in the statute? Is that in the ordinance? I, 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 I didn't Montague. see it, but I think that would have I addressed. think that was part of the application process. Okay. The, 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 the owner first has to come forward and said, I, I put this property up for, for potential use for mm -hmm. hunting, and then the people that want to hunt it have to essentially apply to hunt on that piece of property and the, the owner can say yay or nay. That's certainly the way I would like to see it. If, that, if it goes forward. You could say uh, them and, and their immediate family or something like that. I mean, you could go that route. I mean, it'd be easy. Well, if, but if under the, you know, section B, the licensed hunting, uh, it says hunters can hunt subject to the following. One could be permission from the property owner. Right, yeah. Other yeah. than DMA. Yep. DMA? Deer management. Yeah. Yeah. DMU is what they used to call them. But. They, they have a lot of signage on those uh, properties that are run by the Soil Conservation District. There's another chunk out here at yeah, the other side of Durham. Yeah, there's a couple. Yeah. There's a couple 40-acre pieces in yep. there that they draw names out of a hat. I, or actually, you get you get it's first come first serve. Does Montague allow <coughs> on their city property? Do you know? Did they t did they tell either one of you, Scott, whether they allow? I don't know. I don't believe they do. Because because again, hunting since I was 13 years old. Um, come bow season, bow season starts October 1st and runs. We got people walking through state property. Duck Lake State Park is allowed. I mean. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the hunters are, for the most part, very, very good and very uh, at what they do and take pride in what they do for the most part. And, of course, you still have, just like everything else in the world, you still got a few, but knowing your arrow flight and everything else, is, as far as so long as they're off the trail and everything else, I don't, again, the city could approve it for X amount of people for the area if we if we decided to go that route. I guess we can always look at that down the road, um, whether we want to allow it. But there are some pretty nice, substantial pieces of property owned by the city that would, where the deer happen to be. Quite honestly, um, deer don't travel everywhere, but 
Um, there's some pretty good sections, um, like off of uh, Peterson Road out there that we own. Um, that's a huge chunk of blue um, out there by the cemetery. Um, yeah, like I said, we can we can make that decision. I've been to numerous oh, so. council meetings in Montague where <clears throat> the council actually approves every single permit. They know who the, who, the, who the person applying is and where they are going to be hunting. So the council approves every one of those permits. And like I said, the permit, you can put whatever you want on it. I mean, name, address, location, right. cell phone number. I mean, we can have, make the application as, as complicated or as not complicated as we want just so we can keep track of them. And I think they got it in there that... Well, doesn't it say the city manager or the chief of police has, has to have every yes. one of them to Yes. Be up. And then, the landowner, too, probably. And yeah. then I think right. that... If, if, if between the landowner, the chief of police, and the city manager, I, I think you pretty much got covered. Right. You know, they do a background check on in, in individuals that are applying for a license. I've got one question, curiosity on my own part, and I don't know if Chief, if you can answer it or not, but <clears throat> I'm not a hunter, but I do know a lot of times when you shoot a deer, it's not going to lay down and die right now. No, they run. They're going to run. Especially with a bow. With a bow. So yeah. if you were hunting <clears throat> on, a, on, a, on a proof piece of property, and the deer takes off after you hit it and goes on to somebody else's property who is not approved and lays down and dies, are you allowed to go on there? And no. It's going to happen. It, it, it's going to happen. You have, essentially, you have to get permission from the property owner to yeah. go and recover it. It's no different than hunting state property if I hunt up in Merritt or Manistee where I hunt. If I shoot a deer and it runs over on a, on a private property, I can't go and get it. I need right. to go and get approval from the landowner to go get it. And, I mean, quite honestly, who wants to have a, a deceased deer on their property? Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, you know what, I got a, a deer on your property. It ran over from here. Can I go get it? And nine times out of ten, these people are going to say, yeah. Yeah, I don't and see something. Just, just don't gut it on my property. Move it back yeah, to where you were. <laughs> All right, I, I think we have enough consensus on yeah. this for staff to move forward on this. Yeah. I, at this point, I'd like to open up for uh, public comment. If there's anyone in the wants to make any statements, questions? Any, uh, I've got a yes, sir. I've got a question for staff. Um, the old Bishop property, mm -hmm. I was looking at GIS. It says that the buildings and vehicles and all that stuff falls on our property. Is that correct? Or where does that line go? We, we pretty much gerrymandered the property lines to avoid all of their buildings. Okay. So GIS is not right. Okay. No, right. And, and if you do look at it, it's, a, it's an amazing tool, but a lot of times when they do the overlay of the property lines onto mm -hmm. the aerials, it's off. And yeah, thing. and that's why I just wanted yeah. to make sure that we didn't have a bunch of no, we, uh, vehicles specifically, and buildings that we now uh, own. We inherited a couple of pumps and that was enough. Okay. Um, oh, one trailer, but that's gone. Yeah, did we, yes. did we get the trailer? Right? It is gone. I, th is it, I think it's gone from Twin Cities as well, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, they tried to sell it, which I thought was humorous, but <laughs> might as well. <laughs> we were tearing. Yeah, Twin Cities did that for free. Yeah, so it was just, I think they were trying to recover some, some costs. Terry did out. Terry did a solid since we've been out there, I don't know, 15 times in the last two years. All right. There's... Nothing more. We're adjourned. Go back in a few minutes. Turtles, initialing, set, ready? Yep, ready. Ready? Ready, set. Clock, I call this meeting to order. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God. All right, first up is the approval of the agenda. I'll make a motion to uh, approve the amended agenda, which we received since we got here. 
um, for June 13, 2023. Second. Moved and seconds. Any discussion on this? <coughs> All those in favor say yes. 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 Opposed say no. <coughs> Next is special presentation, library update. Yes. I'm assuming I'm supposed to come up here. That's a good okay. spot for you. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Ray Meter. This is Norm Kittleson. We are your representatives to the Whitehall Community Library. We're doing fine. That's what I hear. We had a clean audit this past year, just like we've had in the last several years. Uh, total revenues have exceeded expenses, so we're in the black. Uh, capital projects finally covered our boiler replacement last year and a new roof after 20 some years. Uh, security cameras, new carpet, and meeting room furniture are planned for this year, along with whatever else surprises us out there in the world. Um, Basically, that's it. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> There's some wonderful numbers there in that sheet that he's handing out to you guys. Yeah, it's just a little uh, highlight sheet and a uh, little, little brag literature. So, <laughs> good job. Ray, how was your usage over uh, the COVID period? Did you guys see an increase in usage? Oh, this last uh, year we're way up from the previous year, oh, about uh, 30 percent. It's okay. a beautiful place and it's a real asset to the community. And of course, during COVID, you know, everything went downhill yep. a little bit, but not too bad. But it's rebounded pretty good. Then. We did a lot more with the uh, electronic stuff. Good. 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 Do you guys have a way to track how the solar picnic tables are being used or how much they're being used? <clears throat> Do we? Not as good as I was hoping. We can't narrow down off of Catchmark's Wi-Fi. The one that's got a um, hotspot in it out of Whitehall Township, we can track because it's just that hotspot and we can track the usage. Mm -hmm. We can't off of just the general Catchmark. We don't know who's plugging in. But have you seen the pictures of the guys doing their concerts out there with their electric guitars plugged yeah. in and their amps? <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> I just, I, I was just curious as to, you know, how much it was, I, I figured it would go over fine. I just wondered how much it was, how well it was going over. And I think it'll be even more popular after the kids from the tech center get done building the or removable fourth seat for that one downtown. Mm -hmm. It'll just wheel out of the way for wheelchair users and wheel back up. Oh, cool. And of course, the library book bike is being used quite a bit and looking forward to more events in town to uh, show up at and hand out things for the library kids. Cool. Any other questions? Just a, a statement that I think the, we're very fortunate to have such a wonderful institution in our community and, and I think it's very well managed and I'm just delighted that the numbers are up and there's people out there that think libraries are are old-fashioned and people aren't using them but this year is proof <laughs> they that, are. That, oh, yeah. that, that people are using them and they do value them so uh, thank you for all you've done to make these numbers. You're quite welcome, thank you. All right. Any comments from anyone else on this subject? Should we sneak out now? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up is the consent agenda. I'll move for the approval of the consent agenda. Second. Yes. And second. Is there any discussion? I've got one question, Scott, on the uh, correspondence. The minutes from the Planning Commission. Uh, new business, 201 West Colby, site plan extension. Can you tell me that is in? Are they behind? Are we not going to see any progress this year? Or? Well, what, what that is, is our ordinances uh, 
make site plans valid for one year. And since they had, they actually got their original site plan approval last spring, and since that was expiring, they just came in for a renewal. So at this point, uh, I talked to one of the uh, investors, and they still are hopeful to break ground early July. The Michigan Economic Development Corporation is going to have a meeting the 24th of June. No, nope. that's our pre-meeting. Um, we're meeting the 24th because they're going to go to the MEDC at the end of the month for um, some tax incentives from the state of Michigan. Okay. So they think that's the last piece. They have submitted a redesigned interior that adds residential units in place of the restaurant. I think at this point they're moving forward after trying with numerous potential restaurateurs and not landing one that they're looking at some additional um, residential units. Oh. Yeah. So it'll be all residential and one commercial. I mean, not that I'm against resident, not I'm not against the residential, but I was really hoping that we'd have a nice restaurant down there. Yep. Okay, thank you. That Any, was all I had. Anyone else? All those in favor of the consent agenda, say yes. 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 Opposed? No. The consent agenda is approved. Next is messages from the mayor, city council, and city manager. Um, Scott, anything? Um, the one thing that I do have is, uh, and I'm forgetting all the acronyms, so don't quote me on, on the details, but um, there is uh, a round of uh, state grants that are available for placemaking. Um, I don't think that's the latest term. Councilmember Holmstrom, you'd sent me some information. Mm -hmm. We actually joined in with the West Michigan Collaborative, uh, which is about five counties. We submitted the West Kobe as one of the projects. The West Michigan group accepted that, so now I've got a week to get a whole ton of paperwork back to them. Sorry. So that, um, <laughs> it's fun work. Uh, so that we would be included. I'm not sure what all projects are included, just that ours is included. And in theory, uh, they pre-designated the state of Michigan a certain allotment for each of the regions. So the right place out of Grand Rapids and the Grand Rapids Chamber of Commerce are spearheading it. But it also includes uh, Lakeshore Advantage, which I think is the Ottawa County Chamber, as well as the Muskegon Economic Development. Greater Muskegon. Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah. Yes, yeah. G9, Greater Muskegon <laughs> Economic Development. I can't even get the ones right that I know. Uh, so, that, so that was pretty good news, is that we are included. And I think I did mention that the state of Michigan has rescinded $88,000 towards Warner Street. We, uh, our understanding is that that was part of the federal increase in the debt limit between the Republicans and Democrats. I think the Republicans finally said, all right, we'll go along with increasing the debt limit, but any uh, non-earmarked funds, which is what they called, has to come back. Uh, that 88 grand was earmarked for us, but we hadn't obligated it as yet because the project's, you know, another year out. So I guess we had a little time to save a few extra bucks and cover that compromise money that was rescinded. So... Possibly good news and a little bad news. How many feet does $88,000 translate into? Not much at all. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still, still a poke in the eye. Um, I would ask, you gave us this technical memorandum. Yes. Is there any way you could distill that down to a short statement of what's going on with this? It, it, my, my interpretation is that the testing has been done, but there's no results yet. Well, they, um, that's for Tannery Bay, right. for the people in the audience. Yes. And that's uh, the quarterly report. They used to have to do monthly. Uh, they just, Tannery, or um, Whitehall Leather, Genesco, has to provide quarterly reports, which is managed by Horizon Environmental. They just talk about any activity that's taken place down there as well as any of the test results and those reports are always published before the test re often before the test results are in 
so there's always kind of a, a lag. There's been no um, issues with any of the test results over the last year. Heather Hopkins is still the project manager on that. Uh, she's getting ready to retire, but you know that project's only been going on for 25 years now, so can't blame her for that. And they do not have, the state's still working on revising their website so that the general public can go in and access those documents. Uh, but they're not there yet. Heather today, or email yesterday, said maybe by the end of the year, anybody, anywhere can type in Whitehall Leather and get that report as well as access to the test results. But basically that three-page document says it's still a clean bill of health. Uh, in the in section four, where they're talking about the tracking of the disposal of the tannery bay materials removed, where it looks like 669.28 tons to date have been removed from just the North Shoreline. Correct. Okay. And have have they? Do you know if they hauled any away? I know they have piles there, but have they? I'm not sure if they've hauled any okay. away yet. So um, there was a level of dewatering. Plus, I think the report refers to testing before it can be hauled. It can probably be hauled just about anywhere because you've got different levels of landfills. Mm -hmm. And Coopersville, I think, is a class three, which can handle just about anything. And that's likely location of its relocation. Mm -hmm. Do we know if they have any intention of any more removal? Or have they re removed everything, that, at least from the shoreline, that, that they found? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I know that Genesco was obligated to haul out a 1,000 tons, if that's the right number. I don't have the report in front of me. Uh, but Eastbrook Homes has told them you're going to haul whatever we dig out even if it's over a thousand. I think Genesco kind of said, all right, we'll, we'll take care of it. That was an estimate from 20 years ago. It doesn't appear as though the piles are getting any bigger. No. It looks like they, they okay. Um, okay, that's all I have on that. Um, let's go to council. Jeff. Uh, nothing now, sir. Scott. I got two things. Okay. Um, one is I don't know if our if we made our contract with uh, whoever it was Muskegon Township for ordinance enforcement. I don't know if that's in effect yet or not, or who to complain to. But uh, we need to look at enforcing our grass ordinance badly. There are lawns all over town that have not even been mowed once this year. What's your phone number? We'll have the police uh, take a run through the city yet this week. The contract, we've signed it, we've sent it back to Muskegon Charter Township. They have to take it to their board for approval and we haven't gotten it back as yet. As soon as they send it back, then they'll start doing the enforcement. And the other thing I have is if we're going to plan on doing uh, more events at the North Mayor's Promenade. Is there any way that the city could come up with some money to invest in a larger tent so there's a place for people to get out of the sun? I was down for the, was it? Feet in the street. Feet, yeah. And uh, there were a few canopy tents up here and there, but, uh, you know, unless you move the chairs underneath them, they, the shade was very, very limited, and it was, it just happened to be a really nice, hot, sunny day down there then, and there, there wasn't a whole lot of place to get out of the weather. <laughs> no, and I guess my hesitation is the bigger the tent you go, the more anchorage you need, yep. and that's always been a problem. They, you know, drive those big tent stakes in, we require them to fill them back up, but, you know, they're never get filled quite right, then yeah. you get the I water just, in there, the freezing. Yeah, I just wondered if we bought a bigger tent. And yeah, actually none the of that. The tent was the same size all the time. And if DPW was putting it up and taking it down all the time, maybe we could figure out how to do some retractable anchors or something like that. To, so far, we've not done any of the tents. That's always been up to the event organizers. Oh, okay. And I know those tents are expensive when yeah, they run them out. Definitely not cheap. 
or their wedding reception. Yeah. Just, you know, just we can look something, at something I yep. just, the building did start providing a little bit of shade. <laughs> but not a lot. <laughs> That's all I have. Sure. Nothing tonight. Uh, it's just one thing, going through town, uh, I've happened to notice that the, our flags on the post are in, looking in pretty bad shape. And I guess I'm wondering, uh, being downtown, can we approach TIFA as far as possibly generating some money to replace those? Um, yeah, that's kind of an annual thing. I think DPW was starting to replace them today. Um, oh. They they were a little bit tied up with the new clock downtown. Um, I'll, I'll stop there because the mayor probably wants to use that. Um, <laughs> Thank you. But I'll, I'll double check with Brian. But I think they started replacing the oh, flags wonderful. and the banners today. But we'll double check. Yeah, it was. Oh, I got weather wasn't the greatest today. I didn't get out and walk. So. <laughs> But yeah, they the ones that were up there were looking kind of bad. Yep. <clears throat> Steve? Yeah, a couple things. Um, this latest Michigan Municipal League magazine we got with our stuff here, they talk about state budget surplus and municipalities and revenue sharing, which from what I remember when I was first on the council, I don't know, about 50, 60 years ago or whatever. <laughs> 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 We used to get a fairly substantial amount of our our monies from state revenue sharing, and then they cut it way back. And now it sounds like they're going to start giving us back some of this revenue sharing. And uh, I wonder if that is going to be able to help us with this road project, or if this uh, is got to go to certain things, or you know, I mean. I don't know if you read this article or not, but it sounds like a fairly substantial amount is going to be going to cities, and I just don't want to count our chickens before they're hatched, but... Yeah, and you're probably a lot more optimistic than I am. Oh. Uh, <laughs> because what the, what the state started doing is there's two. One is constitutional revenue sharing and statutory, which what was happening in years past is the state revenues went up, they were required to give us certain minimum amounts out of constitutional and they artificially lowered the statutory so probably for about 10 or 15 years we got the same exact amount of money even though the state coffers were building significantly uh, we did get a boost um, and Alyssa I think is behind me in 21 and 22 and it was retroactive with uh, the census and since we had a population increase we got a nice little boost, but it's not going to start paving miles of road by any means. Oh, okay. And and again, they always do that based on um, revenue forecasting. I think they do it four times a year, <coughs> and there's always an adjustment at the end of the year. And you know, until the state fiscal year is done and we've got the checks cashed, um, then that's when my comfort level is. That's what right there. A Christmas bonus or something. <laughs> Something like that. Yep. Kind of. And Alyssa does budget based upon those uh, revenue forecasts that oh, are generated okay. by the state, but right. sometimes they're wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, if we all could forecast the stock market, right? Yeah. We wouldn't be sitting here. Right. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we're we're always hopeful. I think the current administration and the governor's office has been favorable and doing what they can. Okay, that's it. Uh, the other thing is. Uh, over this past weekend, the White Lake Area <coughs> Sport Fishing Association put on a, a fishing tournament for the kids. And boy, that was just awesome. There was a, just a ton of kids down there at Goodridge Park. And, and uh, of course, I had three grandsons involved in the thing, and they were, one of them said it was the best day of his life. Of course, he won a few things, so. <laughs> but anyway, I, I just wanted to kind of put a plug in for them. They were put out a call, they kind of would like to have more members in their uh, sport fishing association and they do the fish boil later in August and they do quite a few things around to help with that resource in the area. And it's only like, I think he said it's $10 a year for a family 
to join the White Lake Sport Fishing Association. And I just wanted to put a plug in for them from my personal uh, point of view. Just It was just a really nice thing and I, I'm hoping at least they really try to keep the area, get the area cleaned up, everybody clean up after themselves and I'm hoping they did a pretty good job because I didn't stay until everybody was gone but it looked like it was pretty clean when they all left so just yep. wondered what if there was any comments on that they did. No, they, they've always done a good job cleaning up after themselves. It was a great event. <laughs> a lot of fun. That's the, it. The, uh, from what I spoke with them, they had over 200 kids oh, registered wow. to do that. And yeah. uh, they also do a annual highway cleanup, the Sport Fishing yeah. Association does. So they're, they're a great organization to have in this community. So I'm glad they're there. And I'm thinking probably 50% of the kids got prizes. <coughs> along with everybody got a little <coughs> bag and they, they served uh, pizza to everybody. And, that was really, really a good deal. Keith, nothing this evening. Okay, Mr. Mayor, I got one thing I forgot. Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> this last weekend, I went to Ohio just for council's information. I went to Ohio and went through several cities in Ohio, and one of the, and, and you guys know because I put out that big nine-page thing, all the stuff I like. Um, I found something else. Um, Scott's cringing over here. Um, essentially what they do is they have, um, they go like this, they have banners for past, um, and they put them up, must be for Memorial Day and leave them up for a while, of um, military members from the past um, with their picture, their service dates, or their passing date, and they put them up as flags. They're essentially old banners. I've seen those. And, um, I thought it was one city, and then I just kept going through cities in Ohio, and, and everybody's got the same banner. So I wouldn't mind seeing that down the road for us, and something maybe something as far as a White Lake uh, thing between us and Montague. Um, see if we can get some buy-in from them and just put these people up. And I don't know how the process they work, how they get their veterans up there, but it's it's pretty impressive. It's most I mean every flag. It's got somebody different on it and everything else. And I think it's both sides. I think there's one on one side and one person on the other side. So um, it's it's definitely humbling to say the least. So okay. All right. And for me I I am very happy to announce that our brand new clock is up and working. It's uh, if you don't know where it is, it's on the northwest corner of Mears and Colby or in front of Fetch Brewery. It's a beautiful clock. I look forward to many years of correct time. <laughs> on both sides. <laughs> on both sides. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. I'm so happy. And that was basically a, a uh, TIFA-funded project? It was a TIFA-funded project, but I will have to put kudos out for the DPW staff that assisted in its uh, installation as well as we borrowed a SkyTrack from Winberg Construction and uh, Rick Blankenship from the district schools came over and actually ran this uh, SkyTrack for us. So between the city, a private entity, and the schools and Verdon uh, Clock Company, it was, it was a pretty good project. Went up without a hitch. Working together. How, yep. how wonderful is that? Absolutely. I love it. <laughs> All right. Uh, sir. Our own representative on the County Board of Commissioners. Yep. Kim Seary, your uh, County Commissioner for this area. I live on Staple Road. Uh, I just have uh, an announcement of a, uh, an opportunity for, uh, for the arts here uh, in this summer. Uh, it's called Marked. It's a uh, Summer Arts Camp, uh, day camp in Muskegon for grades 5 through 12, July 31st to August 4th. Uh, the things that are available to young people are uh, drama, choir, orchestra, visual arts, songwriting, concert band, tech team training, photography, worship band, and more. Uh, registration uh, goes through June 20th. Uh, it's a special price through June 20th, and the registration closes on July the 10th. So, where would they register for that? And I, well, I'm going to leave this for you. <laughs> okay. So that information, that website is the best place to go for that. So. Okay. Okay. Any questions? 
Thank you very much. Can the city post that on the city website somewhere? Yeah. Yep. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, Norm Kittleson, 1105 East Lewis Street. I wanted to, uh, Council Member Brown's remarks regarding the lawns reminded me of something that I've been hoping I could share with you guys. So thanks for prompting my memory there, Scott. Um, in case you're not familiar, there's a, a worldwide movement called No Mo May, M O W. And um, the idea is to allow lawns to grow through the entire month of May to help pollinators, uh, flying insects such as bees, other insects, and um, animals that um, forage through or actually uh, use the pollen from plants, uh, dandelions, and other things to uh, help them gain their nutrition, and it also spreads the pollen around. Pollinators worldwide are really under a lot of pressure right now for various reasons. So. This is a movement that's going to help encourage the establishment of their colonies early in the season. Uh, so what municipalities all over the United States and the world are doing are saying, okay, for the month of May, we're going to forego our, you know, uh, ordinances regarding lawn length, but uh, to allow the, the um, grasses and different plants to grow so that they can produce flowers that the pollinators can take advantage of. So. I'm just putting it out there for you guys, something to consider. I let my lawn go as long as I could this year, and about the third week of May, I'm just like, if I don't cut it now, I'm never going to be able to get it done. So I'd have to just pull in a flamethrower or something. But, you know, um, thank you for not ticketing me, by the way. I really appreciate that. So anyway, just something to consider. So thank you, Scott. I meticulously observed no mold May. All right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of lawn do you have? You don't have a lot of lawn. Thank you. You're so lucky. You don't have a lot of lawn, so it's all good. <laughs> no rain may help yeah. with that. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. Brown lawn may. And then, you know, I think there's something maybe for a future work session to talk about that. Just some sort of city-sponsored event. A contest to see who can win. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Is there any other public comments? Okay, and we will move on to old business. Do we have any old business? No, sir. No old business. We do have new business. Resolution 2324, budget amendment number four. <clears throat> I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2324 budget amendment number four. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Anyone have any? No? Roll call, please. Holmstrom? Yes. Malali? Yes. Connell? Yes. Sikinga? Yes. Heidelberg? Yes. Brown? No. Salter? Yes. Resolution 2324 is approved. Um, last is public comment. Anybody? Yes. Oh, yes. Is up. Public. Hi. Um, I'm Tamara Horn. I'm a resident of the city of Whitehall. I wanted to share a piece of news just in case you missed it. In April, the city of Muskegon Commission unanimously passed a climate resolution to eliminate harmful emissions by 2040. <laughs> The city of Muskegon Mayor Ken Johnson said, quote, I'm personally, I personally am excited to not only see how we as an organization can reduce our carbon footprint and become more clim climate mindful, but also how can we implement and modify policy to encourage development that is environmentally friendly, end quote. It's good news that the council, city manager, and department heads in Whitehall now have more neighboring cities to partner with as you make and implement your plan. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? One more thing. Yes, sir. I'm done. <laughs> uh, just to make everybody aware and the public and everything else, the forest creatures will be showing up the 22nd through the 25th next week. Forest creatures? Oh. Electric forest. Electric forest. Electric forest. Okay. Electric forest. So just to make you aware whether you like it or not, they're coming. I thought we were going to have another season. Oh, you got your ticket already, Steve? <laughs> you got your ticket? Yeah. Walmart will have to hire 200 more people. I, I do have one more uh, thing. To, the uh, White Lake Fireworks Committee has now received their official 501c nonprofit status. 
and we'll be putting uh, donation cans throughout the community looking for funds to continue to pay for this uh, 4th of July fireworks. So if you see those cans out there, please uh, help us out. With that, nothing else, we're adjourned. <laughs>